we have what could be a very informative week coming up, even if politics may dominate the financial market headlines. That's because, on Tuesday the 12th of March, we have the latest meaningful vote on Brexit. Though whether you think meaningful is the right word, I'll leave up to you, given how the results of recent parliamentary votes on this subject seem to have had relatively little influence. And then on Wednesday the 13th of March, we have the latest spring statement from Chancellor of the Exchequer, Mr Philip Hammond. Remember that the actual budget now takes place in November or December, so this really could be just a holding statement, especially as the Brexit situation remains relatively unclear. However, back in the winter, the Chancellor did promise an extra £20 billion investment in the NHS, and government tax receipts exceed expectations in January. So it will be interesting to see if Mr Hammond moves further away from austerity and loosens the purse strings some more to curry favour with voters. Sorry, support the economy. Now, throughout all of this, the pound is likely to be the lightning rod for what markets think of the latest Brexit and other political developments. Usually, markets express satisfaction or concern with the company's economic prospects through the bond market by making the government pay more or less to borrow, depending on whether they're unhappy or pleased. However, with the Bank of England sitting on £435 billion worth of gilt or government bonds after its quantitative easing scheme, that option isn't really available, although the yield on the benchmark 10-year gilt has begun to edge higher of late, as we can see here. That then takes us back to the pound, which recently reached a two-year high against the euro and a seven-month peak against the dollar, as markets took the view that a hard Brexit can still be avoided and that this would be a good thing. Now, you may disagree and be entirely relaxed about the prospect of a hard Brexit, but for the moment, markets, like it or not, mainly because they don't know what it may mean, and we all know that rather tied maxim about how markets hate uncertainty, for the moment, markets don't like the idea of a hard Brexit. So, watch what the pound does to see what they think of Brexit. Pound up means they're pricing in a softer Brexit with an agreed transition period. Pound down probably means fears of a so-called disorderly departure as of the 29th of March with no agreement with the EU. Now, as a final point before we move on, please note that none of that commentary in any way reflects any views on Brexit on behalf of myself or my employer. So please don't troll me on Twitter for being a Remainer or a Brexiteer. I'm just describing how the market seems to be interpreting things right now. Here, by the way, is a chart of the pound against the dollar and the euro since the 1st of June 2016, just before the referendum on EU membership that led to the vote to leave that summer. Right, it's a little bit quieter on the company front after the recent deluge of full year results, but we still have a handful of FTSE 100 firms due to published figures or trading updates, while the news flow from the FTSE 250 and Junior A market is also still plentiful. Names to watch include the following. Drinks Phenomenon Fever Tree on Monday the 11th of March, Gambling services provider 888, oil producer Cairn Energy, Domino's Pizza and support services player G4S on the 12th, Hikma Pharmaceuticals, insurance giant Prudential, Balfour Beatty and doorstep lender and bid target Provident Financial on the 13th, Cineworld, Capita and One Savings Bank on the 14th, and finally, Barclay Homes, JD Weatherspoon and Restaurant Group which is now the proud owner of Wagamama, on Friday the 15th of March. But for all of the interest that that lot could spark, the stock that I think could really cause a fuss in the week ahead is supermarket giant Morrison's. It's due to report full year results to the end of January on Wednesday the 13th of March. Now as we can see here, the shares have frankly gone nowhere fast over the past 12 months or so, as investors have fretted about three issues in particular. Weak consumer confidence is one. Ongoing fierce competition from Tesco, Sainsbury, Asda, as well as the discounters Aldi and Lidl is another. And then finally, you've got nagging fears about whether Amazon is gonna try and make its presence felt in the grocery market after its $13.7 billion acquisition of Whole Foods back in 2017. And note that American grocery stocks have weakened again of late amid, as yet unconfirmed, press reports that Amazon's going to open more physical grocery stores stateside. Now, these concerns are persisting despite a continued improvement in trading at Morrison's. The Christmas statement in early January 
showed a 3.6% increase in like-for-like -like sales, excluding fuel, in the nine weeks to the 6th of January, although that did represent a bit of a slowdown from the prior bumper quarter. Even so, that number put Morrisons on track for a 13th straight quarter of like-for-like -like sales growth, as the firm has focused on providing quality at the right price in its stores, showed solid growth online with its relationship with Ocado, and benefited from faster growth in its wholesale business. Boss David Potts has also left fully owned expectations unchanged since the Christmas update. Remember, the company has got itself four particular targets for this year. At least £700 million of annual uh, wholesale, annualised wholesale revenues, a figure which Mr Potts has always said will be beaten, uh, between 75 and £125 million of profit from wholesale online and services, lower expansion costs at morrisons.com, and net debt to remain firmly under control below probably the £1 billion mark. So, after those, the big numbers to watch to sort of quantify all of that are as follows. Like for like sales growth in the final quarter of the year. Pre-tax profit, where the consensus forecast calls for around £400 million against £380 million a year ago. And in the year ahead, the consensus is for a further advance to around £440 million, by the way. The third number to watch is a total ordinary dividend, and that's expected by analysts to be around 6.84 pence a share, again 6.09p last year. That's the ordinary. Remember, the company paid a 4p special at this time last year and followed up with a 2p per share special at the interims. And then also do watch net debt. That had fallen to £929 million at the end of the first half. Strategically, watch for an update on the agreement to supply McCall's news agents and convenience stores on a wholesale basis, and also any thoughts from boss David Potts on how, or whether, the troubled Sainsbury as the merger proposal and the Marks and Spencer Ocado joint venture plan change the competitive landscape at all. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.